Good morning everyone, I'm TJ and today I want to show you how to model distributed joints in FEDEM. That means prismatic, cylindrical and actually also cam joints. And I will show you different ways to position and align them. I will also talk about um, how you can extend their functionality between with some uh, hashtag commands. If you write um, hashtag cubic in the text field, uh, you will use uh, interpolation functions between the master nodes, the triads, uh, of a higher order, which uh, improve the numerical performance and also the velocities and accelerations occurring if the joint is heavily loaded. And also you can use a hashtag called extended uh, if you want to extend the joint um, outside its actual range. And then I will give you some tips about how to avoid problems and some limitations in the joints. So stay tuned. To model prismatic joints and cylindrical joints in FEDEM might be a little bit tricky sometimes. And uh, let's first see how they work. And now I will animate the motion of this uh, mechanism and you see that the green box is sliding along the rod. And uh, what happens is that this box has two slave nodes which will slide along this beam or the rod. And uh, what Phenom is doing here is that these two slave triads that are, we can click on one of the joints here. This is one cylindrical joint and it has one slave node which is, you can see it's, it's marked being blinks here when I click on it. That slave node will S uh, slide between the two end nodes here and it's the master node number 67 which is here and master node 79 which is on the opposite here. So when uh, the slave node number 80 is sliding along the beam it will distribute the force between the two end triads. Sometimes you want the slave triad here to distribute the forces between the closest master triad. And that means in this case it will distribute the force between these two end nodes. But then you might want to use the add master button here to add masters and you could add master continuously along this beam here. And then the force uh, from this slave triad will be distributed to the closest master node. And then you will see when you animate the stresses that the stresses will follow this green box continuously. And that's a really strong feature in FEDEM. However, what you should know is that if you have a prismatic joint which is distributing the force between this node and the closest triad, it's not preventing this green box uh, against uh, rotating along around this axis because it's just like a pin and um, in order to avoid it to tilt along the axis here you need to actually apply two or model two prismatic joints so here you can see that I have cylindrical one no uh, cylindrical joint we can see here a cylindrical joint one and two they are positioned and oriented identically between the two end triads and they are also oriented identically and that's really important because the master nodes uh, must have a co along this beam or rod must have the same orientation and what I want to show you now is how you um, can position and orient these prismatic joints the last thing I want to show you is how to use the smart move command when you make joints like prismatic joints or cylindrical joints. And here I want this green box to slide along this red rod. And then I use a prismatic joint. And then I want to define uh, the red uh, part, the shaft, to be um, the, the master part. That means I'll need to position the master triads along this red rod. And now I switch to the line view mode. And the end of the rod is here. 
So I'll start my prismatic joint in this location, accept the choice, and then I want to define my last triad to be at the other end of the rod, here. Um, and then I can attach it with this command. I select the joint and then I select the red rod. So the rod will be my master part and the triads, the master triads will be attached to this part. Um, then you can see that my slave triad will be uh, positioned in the middle of nowhere here and I want to move it and I use the smart move command and I select this slave triad uh, you can say it's triad number 13 and it's attached to the prismatic joint but it's still not attached to another component and then I move it to this green part there and then I can attach it to the green bracket here and then you can see that the prismatic joint turns yellow and you can see that the master triad number 13 is attached let's go to a solid view again the master triads are well it's red so you can't see it highlighted but let's switch to the other view you see here the master triads are attached to this uh, shaft or the rod while the slave triad is attached to the green part and that means that the green part will slide along this um, uh, beam. Uh, but one thing you should be, you should notice that uh, it's not properly al aligned. And uh, the alignment was quite arbitrary here. And that's because I snapped to two triads and um, I didn't select, I didn't define the rotation. I could use the smart move command to align this joint again. But in this example, I need actually two prismatic joints to enable this green part to slide without tilting. Um, and uh, then I need two prismatic joints that have the same alignment. And I just, before I switch or end my presentation, I will show you how you could do it. You could solve that issue. Okay, let's uh, select solid view and I changed the view on this part because I want to use it in a special way I will show the lines, the surface and then I will actually make or position my prismatic joint here and now because I'm selecting nodes on the surface of this part which is properly aligned you can notice that the triad is or the orientation is uh, normal to the surface and now I can get rid of this mesh view. I can switch to the shaded view with transparency. Then you see my two um, stickers that uh, uh, makes it difficult to move it. So I delete those and then I use the smart move command and I select the joint and then I move it to the proper position. And that's the end of this one there it is I switch to the line view and then I can move the end of this prismatic joint to the wanted position which is on the other end same as for the first first prismatic joint and I select this one and then you can notice it will move in the right position. I know this one will have the correct orientation, this um, um, prismatic joint, and I select the one which is prismatic joint number two, and I will also put it to the, to the master, uh, master part, which is the rod. I know I can um, pick up my triad, my slave triad here and I'll move it to the other side of the green green bracket here 
and now you see that this joint now has the same or the proper orientation while this one doesn't. So then I could delete this one and I could um, use this one instead. There we are. So now I modeled the, the prismatic joint two different ways. One that gave me the wrong orientation. I could fix that orientation, but it would actually be simpler to put the prismatic joint on a structure which has the proper alignment and then move it in position. So there are two different ways to do it. You can choose which one.